Of course. Of course. I still am scared of cancer. I'm still scared of it. But God has blessed me with this thing mentally to let me know that I have a purpose. And my purpose is to walk through this thing so that I can show other people that they can walk through it too. So I got my second diagnosis of ovarian cancer. Um, of course they tell you when you're taking the pills, when you're going through breast cancer, they say that uh, it could cause other cancers. Well, they said one out of 50 women would develop ovarian cancer and I was that one woman. But that's alright though. When I got that diagnosis, of course, I was really, really, I can't say scared, but I was really trying to figure out, like, okay, well, what is God trying to tell me? What is he trying to show me? Obviously, there's something I need to know or that he's trying to show me to be diagnosed again. Well, I went through having a hysterectomy done, a total hysterectomy done. Um, I didn't have to take chemo at the time because they, they ended up getting it, everything. But my doctor told me that if I would have waited two more weeks, that the cancer would have been terminal. Because 70% of my right ovary was covered with cancer, 30% of my left ovary was covered with cancer. So I had already had two beautiful girls, and my husband at the time, we made a deal. I look, we already got these girls, and we're going to just go with this thing. So I was like, okay, doc, just take it off. <laughs> I'm good. So thinking I'm. I'm good, per se. I go back to have my checkup, and my doctor says, well, we're going to have to go back in because your breast cancer has returned. So this is the third diagnosis, which is very rare because I had uh, reconstruction done, and the cancer came back behind my implant. So I'm like, all right, God, now. All right. All right. <laughs> I got it. I think. I got it. Well, during this time, I had so much support from my family and my friends. Everybody was there for me. I would go to the doctor and I would see people that was there by themselves taking chemo treatments. And I would just like, you know, well, where's their support? Or where's their family? So my family started this organization called Team Candy and it was just for me at first. But I changed it. I got all of this love and all of this support. What about the people who don't? So we gotta do something. So Team Candy changed this whole mission and we started helping other people. Helping them with their copay, helping them with gas money to get to the doctors, helping them to uh, babysit their kids because I was a, a, a mother. So I understood that sometimes you just don't feel like it. So we started helping out in the community. We, we did a, a car wash, y'all. And the first car wash that we had, we raised $700. And so what we did with that $700, we found people who actually needed things. Not, and I'm not talking about treatments. I'm not talking about these, these things that, you know, they say we raise money for research and things like that. I'm talking about a meal yeah. for your family. Yeah. I'm talking about gas money to go places. I'm talking about, because we can't work. And I'm talking about simple things that people don't really think about that we actually need. So... We did all of this stuff and we, we helped so many people and I wanted to do more and wanted to do more and I ended up going back to the doctor and the doctor told me and I saw the look on his face and I was like, don't start that today. <laughs> but he told me again, he was like, we gotta fight this thing again and then I was diagnosed with lymphoma. Well, lymphoma is basically a cancer of the lymphatic system which helps you with infections and things like that, your immune system. Well, my doctor did all of my tests, he ran tests, he did everything. And I'm sitting there like, okay, I feel fine. He was like, I want to show you something. He showed me one of his other patients who was in the hospital with the same exact thing that I had, with the same exact symptoms. But I was walking around and she was laying in the hospital for a whole month. So I was like, God, I got you. I got you. I know I got a mission now. I know I have things to do. So cancer gave me my purpose. Yes. It gave me my purpose. When I, when I started out, y'all, I didn't even know what I wanted to do in life. I just knew I wanted to be the best mom I could be. I wanted to be the best wife I could be. That's not what God said. 
God said, we have other things to do. So after going through the lymphoma the first time, I, I did chemo again. I started up for about a year, maybe. Did chemo again. I was on chemo for a total of three years, y'all. And any survivors in here know what chemo does to you. Amen. You know what chemo does. So going through chemo for three years, it really, really, really tore down my body. And when I say tore down, I always say, y'all, and I joke so much. I was like, this thing looks good on the outside, but it's like a lemon car. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it ain't no good. <laughs> but the thing that it actually showed me is that physical exercise. So I started doing yoga. And it took me someplace else mentally doing yoga. I finally learned who I was. Right. So the, the second diagnosis of lymphoma, it came and it went. And I say it came and it went because I told the doctor, once he gave me that one, I was like, man, I ain't worrying about that. I'm not worried about that. I already know how I got me. Right. He done proved it four times before. So let's go. What we got to do? So while I'm going through it, I'm helping everybody else. I started pouring into everybody else. Everybody else. But who was pouring into me? So then I had to stop. And you said it. I had to stop. And I was like, okay. All of these times, I'm like, okay, God, you gave me my purpose. But I still wasn't understanding what was going on, y'all. I still wasn't understanding what I needed to do. So I started basically trying to teach my community about the things that you can do to prevent cancer. The things you can do to help those who are going through cancer. And there's so many things that we can do. And events like this right here is part of my purpose. Because me speaking to y'all, that's pushing me to keep going. It's pushing me to keep going. I, and I can say on my journey, it was so many times that I wanted to give up. I tried to take my life three times. And the main reason was because I didn't want my family to have to suffer with me. And I can tell you one time, in the beginning of my, my journey of cancer, the first diagnosis, I, I took about five oxycodone pills. And I was calling people, nobody was answering the phone. My, my daughter was four and one, they were four and one. And my little one wanted something to drink and I couldn't get up because I had just had surgery. Couldn't move my arms. And my husband at the time went to the store real quick. And I was like, I don't want to do this. I just don't want to do this. So I took five oxycodone pills. And I sat there for about 20 minutes, y'all. Just crying, trying to figure out. And this voice in my head was like, you know, your kids won't have to worry about this if you wasn't here. And it was clear as day, y'all. Like, your family won't have to see you suffering and going through this stuff. And then a voice said, try again. And I threw up the pills whole. <laughs> After 20 minutes, y'all. So, so, my purpose of telling you this is, y'all don't give up. I don't care if it's cancer. I don't care if you stub your toe. Keep going. Keep going. You have a reason to be here. You have a reason to be here. And I like to share this part with the women that are here. Men, I have something for y'all too. But <laughs> cancer took away at one time. It took away everything that made me a woman. When I say this, I mean, you know, when you go through chemo, it takes away your hair. Y'all know how we like to be in the mirror. Your hair got to be right before you go out, right? Y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so going through chemo, I lost. I was like 92 pounds, lost all my weight. So y'all women know how we are about our weight and how we look in our clothes, yeah. right? Yeah. All right. So going through uh, ovarian cancer, it took away my ability to have kids. Y'all know, a woman has kids. Like that's just what it is. And then going through chemo again, my nails, they turned black and they fell off. My toenails, they turned black and they fell off. So picture this. Picture me standing in front of the mirror, bald, skinny. Of course, I turned darker than I, I, I was already. Your nails are gone, you can't have kids. I was stripped of everything that kind of made me a woman. That was the moment 
that I had to dig down deep down inside Amen. and figure out who I was. Because this island of friends, y'all, that thing can go away at any given moment. So you got to know who you are. You got to know who you are from the inside out. God does not, he does not do things out of the ordinary. <laughs> we might not understand it, but all of us have a purpose. And I found my purpose through cancer. Believe it or not. The thing that I'm afraid of, y'all, it made me find my purpose. So, to the women, y'all understand, it doesn't matter how old you are, it doesn't matter where you're from, it doesn't matter where you're going. At this moment right here, you know who you are. And you use who you are to bless other people. You do good, you get good. <laughs> and to my men, men can get breast cancer too. And you know prostate cancer is the brother cancer to breast cancer. So if you have a woman in your life, because we never know like who could get cancer. It could be the person sitting next to you. It could be your, your, your wife, it could be your girlfriend, it could be your daughter, it could be your granddaughter, it could be your niece. So when we speak to about breast cancer, most men, they kind of look at women. But not only can you get breast cancer, but if some, a woman in your life gets breast cancer, let them know that they're beautiful. Make sure that they understand that this thing is not going to take them out and you're going to be by their side. I'm a witness of what cancer can do to a marriage. I lost my husband behind cancer, but it's all right. Yes. It's all right. Everything serves a purpose. Yes. And I am here today just to say thank you because it could have been another way. Y'all could have been saying in remembrance of cancer, but instead, God allowed me to be here to tell my story. So, I just want... If, if only one word of my story touches you, I've done my job. Amen. I serve my purpose. So it doesn't matter what you're going through. No matter what you're going through, keep going. Keep going. You dig deep down inside and you keep going. No matter what it looks like. And I just want to say thank you for listening. And I'm going to leave y'all with my personal quote. Never think that your rough times are the end of the road. They are merely detours on your road to greatness. Thank you guys so much for listening. I appreciate y'all. And now I can go and cry.